Well, hello everybody and welcome to church. Welcome to Mansfield Baptist Church for our morning service of worship. My name is Mark. And my name's Jane. And I'm just thinking, Mark, you're sounding pretty joyful this morning. I am quite joyful. I try to be joyful every day. Do you? Can you? You know, my week's not been that joyful. And I picked up the daily bread and the two words I read was choose joy. And I'm thinking, thanks God, I'm not feeling very joyful. What does joy actually mean? Give me two definitions of joy. Well, if I'm choosing joy, I'm going to choose uh, a curry, I think. Uh, we've got three lovely curry making families uh, in our church. So I'm not saying which one of them the best because they're all good, but that would give me joy. That would be number one. The second one would be uh, riding my bike on a sunny day down a hill, about 25, 26 mile an hour, the wind in my face and the beautiful green cerise scenery around me. That, that's joy. Well, that's very nice for you, I'm sure. And I do like a good curry. Um, but I think there's something a little bit more light and a bit more, you know, a little bit more fun. So I googled children's definitions of joy. So I've got two, a five-year-old's one is this, and I like this one. Um, joy is chocolate milk in my tummy. I thought, yeah, oh, chocolate in my tummy, that's quite nice. And the other one was um, from a seven year, joy is happiness. I like playing outside. And I thought, yeah, those two things I can see would make you feel joy, a definition of joy. And then I start, because I'd gone down the children route, I thought about my grandson the other day. It was over FaceTime and it had two new cars. And I, I said, oh, tell me what they were. And when he started, I looked into his eyes and his eyes were the definition of joy. They were big, they were bright, they were happy. They were full of joy. And I thought, you know what? I wished I could bottle that because as a Christian, I wish my eyes radiated such joy of Jesus' love. And some days they don't. So that's my prayer for myself this morning that I radiate God's joy and love. Well, one of the ways that we <coughs> are filled with joy is when we, we come into the presence of the Lord, when we come into the presence of Jesus, uh, that touches our hearts and fills them with joy and refreshes us uh, to uh, experience his joy, even in the difficult times. Because our theme uh, going through the next few weeks is finding hope in difficult times. And we're, we'll be looking through the book of Psalms. But... We're going to uh, worship and come into the Lord's presence and let's just uh, commit ourselves and invite his presence wherever we are uh, to be that joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Father, we come with open hearts this morning and we ask, Lord, that as we worship you, Lord, that it will be acceptable and Lord, that, that the joy of you will be our strength and as we come into your presence as we encounter your presence lord will you touch our hearts afresh this morning with that joy that comes from your heart in jesus name we pray amen See what the 
Bible it tells us that Jesus understands every weakness of ours because he was tempted in every way that we are but that he did not sin so whenever we are in need we should come bravely before the throne of the merciful God our merciful God and there we will be treated with kindness and we will find the help that we need I don't know how you are this morning, but we often feel that when we failed, that we don't deserve a second chance. When we failed, we feel so much guilt, so much shame. And our instinct is to hide away from the presence of God, from his love. 
but Jesus is such a merciful and loving Savior. He understands all of our weaknesses, all of our faults, all of our failings. And yet he still loves us. That song said, Jesus paid it all. As he died upon the cross, as he stretched his arms out, as his life was poured out, as God laid upon him the sins of the whole world, Jesus cried, it is finished. The way of forgiveness, the price for every sin was paid. And now we are free to just receive that forgiveness. I just encourage you this morning just to close your eyes and just to say in your heart, you need him. And wherever you are this morning, Jesus is such a lovely, wonderful saviour. He will come. He will touch your heart and breathe new life into you. You'll receive his forgiveness this morning. You'll know that you are clean and that you have a second chance because he paid it all. And all to him I owe. Just encourage you this morning to continue with your eyes shut. Perhaps put your hands out this morning and sing those words. Jesus paid it all. All to him. to worship and to uh, to just be in the presence of God. Uh, one of the things that I hear a fair amount is that the church is closed during lockdown. And uh, one thing that uh, I really just want to say to you is that the church is not closed uh, because God is working in many other ways. The Sunday services may be different because we're online, uh, but the work and the ministry that God uh, has called us to do, that continues. So we're going to just share over the next few weeks uh, a few uh, videos with you that will just show you some of the things uh, that have been happening uh, as we've been through this year. Uh, one of those, as you'll be aware, that the mental health uh, is becoming a very, very big issue in, in our uh, society. And uh, Derek and Brenda have been working along uh, for the last few years and have set up the Renew Wellbeing Cafe. And uh, that has been running... Uh, for quite a few months. It is temporarily uh, just stopped while this current lockdown is on, but this uh, video is just going to show you a little bit of an insight into the wonderful work uh, that's going on there and the way that God is using that to meet this need of uh, helping people to find a place that is safe, where it's okay to not be okay.
this time in our nation when mental and emotional well-being is a real and growing concern. Renew Wellbeing provides a safe place, a safe space where people are welcomed, loved and valued and known by name. A place where they can sit and relax or engage in various activities in a friendly atmosphere. And many have said how it has come, they have come to find a lifeline in Renew Wellbeing. A whole day is encompassed in a rhythm of prayer, both at the beginning and end of the, the session, and for a time for helpers, and at midday when anyone can join in. And our prayer space is always open for those who just want to sit and reflect and pray. We're very grateful to Sue and Dyra for providing us with some lovely refreshments and a simple meal. We're adhering to the government, current government guidelines and restrictions, and we're observing all the safety precautions, meeting in the hall to give us more space, but we're limited a bit in the manner in which we operate. But to summarize, there are three simple principles to be present, to be prayerful, and to work in partnership with the local mental health team. Because Derek and I live in the Gedling Borough and we're now in Tier 3, we're unable to participate in person for the next four weeks. But we have an excellent team who are continuing the work of serving our community in this way. And we are, Derek and I, continue to be in touch by email and by phone with many of our folk. So we thank God for good beginnings and we eagerly anticipate what he will do in the future. And we thank you for your loving prayer and support for a new well-being. Bless you. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Good morning. Uh, earlier this week, I was out for a walk and it was a beautiful sunny day. The sky was clear blue and the sun was shining and it was beautiful. Fast forward a few days and what do we have? We have cloudy skies, we have a grey sky, we have a threatening sky and even yesterday and today we have snow. Uh, which is a reason I'm uh, talking to you from home. And we sometimes feel, my goodness, is it always going to be like this? When will the sun shine again? When can we see the clear blue skies? When can we bask in the sunshine? Well, that's a question we ask quite often. And it's a similar sort of question that people in older days are asked. We've started a, a series in church on the Psalms and last week uh, Mark led us in Psalm 1 and he was referring to Terry Waite and the ways in which Terry had, through his life, feasted on the Psalms. Maybe because of the 
Anglican liturgy in which he um, worshipped, where the Psalms are read every week. And what a good discipline. And he imbibed the Psalms. And that stood him in great stead in his time of captivity. Uh, so we look at the Psalms and it's salutary to remember that almost half of the Psalms deal with life gone wrong and lamenting that things are not as they should be. And so today we come to Psalm 13 and I read again the first four verses of that Psalm, Psalm 13. How long, O Lord! Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I, I will sleep in death and my enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. Forgotten us? How long, O oh God? Are you hiding from us? I'm so troubled, it's as though an arrow is piercing my heart. And this is not without some relevance to today's situation for all of us. Troubled and anxious times for those in the health service, for those waiting for urgent operations, for those with COVID-19, those in teaching professions or prefer parents uh, trying to educate their own children, or for business people without any end seemingly in sight, in spite of promises of vaccination for everyone. And sometimes it's difficult to look ahead and welcome a lessening of tension of workload and so on. And so we say with the psalmist, how long will this pressure, will this oppression, will this torment never end? Jane and Paul were young members of the church to which we returned when we came home from overseas on one occasion. Jane and Paul met and married in that church. Paul suffered from haemophilia which prevented his blood from clotting. He contracted AIDS through infected injections of the Factor VIII blood clotting agent. It hit them and their families and the church hard. They were committed Christians. Jane was pregnant and admitted to hospital for the birth, and she was put in a separate room to avoid contact with other patients, and she felt because her husband had haemophilia from AIDS. She felt it was a stigma. The church rallied round and the group met for prayer for his healing and a day of prayer and fasting was held on New Year's Day 1988. Paul died in December that year. I was privileged to share in the funeral service and to read the lesson chosen by Jane. It was Psalm 13. My God, my God, why? How long? We know the feeling. People we have prayed for for months and years. Has God forgotten? He answers other people's prayers, but not ours. How long? Do we feel a failure when we come to accept that things are not okay and that everyone else has got a better result? Or do we accept that it can be okay not to be okay and then open our lives afresh to God, maybe sharing with trusted friends, bringing all our anxieties, our hidden sins, the pressures which bear us down. The psalmist waited for an answer, an end to his disappointment. He was plumbing the depths. We know the feeling. 
We also know that we don't have to bear it alone, although sometimes it feels like that. John Bell of the Iona community, in his book Living, Loving with the Psalms, he tells us, sorry, it should be Living with the Psalms, he tells us of the occasion when he was leading a conference and used the Psalms that Jesus himself knew and that Jesus himself had prayed the Psalms from his youth, crying out to God when he was on the cross, Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? During the pause between sessions, a lady in her seventies who had clearly been weeping asked John if she could tell him a little bit about herself. He agreed and then she recounted a happy life and marriage with five children, grown up and still active Christians. And then she discovered she had a lump in her breast and was diagnosed with cancer. She felt so miserable and she thought her life was going to end. She had good medical treatment and she went on a pilgrimage to Lourdes and people in the parish prayed for her. After a year, the cancer was gone and she was delighted to be able to hold in her arms her grandchildren that she thought she would never see. She felt on top of the world she had regular checkups and then, after the recent one, learned that cancer had reappeared. I was so angry. Angry with myself. Angry at life. I was angry with God. Nothing in my faith formation had taught me what to do with this anger. Until tonight, when I discovered that Jesus Christ said to God, the things I have been afraid to say. So if I've been crying, she said to John, it's not because it's all wrong. It's because I'm relieved that I know now how to pray. And may I add that something the psalmist doesn't say, but if the church understands this and is willing to weep with those who weep, then we need not be alone. <coughs> So, from this psalm, there are words of complaint. Let me read one or two scripture references from the psalms that uh, John Bell indicates in his book that remind us that it's okay to say words of complaint. In Psalm 6, Show favour to me, Lord, for my strength fails. Lord, heal me, for my body is racked with pain. I am utterly distraught. When will you act, Lord? How long, Lord, first, uh, Psalm 13, will you leave me forgotten? Psalm 25, turn to me and show me your favour, for I am lonely and oppressed. Psalm 69, save me, God, for the water has risen to my neck. I sink in muddy depths when there is no foothold. I have come into deep water and the flood sweeps me away. Words of complaint. It's talking to God and telling him as it is and how we feel. So it's okay to have words of complaint, but there are also words of reassurance. And in Psalm 13, we read the first four verses, but verse five goes on. But I will trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord for he has been good to me. But, or it may be you say in this area, but, but however you say it, it's but, it's blessings under trial. 
And uh, there are words again in the Psalms which help us in this. Psalm 34. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and sets them free from all their troubles. The Lord is close to those whose courage is broken. He saves those whose spirit is crushed. And so on, and many other psalms. And there are also words of hope. My heart rejoices in your salvation, verse 6, because you have saved me. We bring to him our physical pain, our mental anguish, our loneliness, our oppression, bereavement. Not that these things will never occur in our lives, but the Lord will sustain us with a love that will never let us go. So let me quote just two other places then, one from the Psalms and one from Romans. Keep me safe, O Lord, says Psalm 16, for in you I take refuge. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. And then those lovely words from the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8 and verse 36. <clears throat> As it is written for your sake, I'm sorry, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things... We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God, that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May God help you in whatever circumstances you find yourselves and help us to help others, being open and honest before him and open and honest before God, before God and also open and honest with ourselves and with other people. May God bless you. Let's just say a prayer together. We pray for those whose lives are broken by distress. May the God of healing restore you. For those whose lives are broken by fear, may the God of healing restore you. For those whose lives are broken by anger, may the God of healing restore you. For those whose lives are broken by pain, may the God of healing restore you. For those whose lives are broken by illness, may the God of healing restore you. For those whose lives are broken by sin, may the God of healing restore you. Father God, in whose love we live and move, we pray for a world crying out to, be, to feel loved, wanted, cherished and unique. Heavenly Father, source of all love. 
We pray for a world torn apart by conflict and war. A world that lives uneasily in a climate of fear, with no clear vision for future days. Heavenly Father, source of all hope. We pray for a world that thinks less of others than of self. A world where division between nations, race, religion, neighbour and family lead to distrust. Heavenly Father, source of all peace. We pray for a world that is short on happiness, too busy to enjoy this world you have created too preoccupied with living to appreciate life. Heavenly Father, source of all joy. We pray for our world in which spiritual longing is satisfied by fashionable notions and temporary solutions with no thought for tomorrow. Heavenly Father, source of our salvation. We pray for a world that needs to know your love, your hope, your peace, your joy and salvation. A world that needs to know it is special and unique and uniquely loved by a heavenly Father. Lord, please hear our prayers and may God bless us, each one. Amen.
come to you, Father, with hearts open to receive your love and kindness. You know how we are as your children in these times of worry and uncertainty. We have trust in you, not only in the good times, but when things are not going smoothly. One thing we can be certain of is through the blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, we can come to you in prayer at any time. We read in Psalm 1 that we need to walk in the ways of righteousness and steer away from sin and darkness. Dear Father God, please help each and every one of us to draw closer to you. Help us to talk to you in prayer, to sit in quietness with you by our sides. Help us to read your word every day and to ask others for help and advice when we are unsure in what we read. Bless us that we're able to see the message that you have in your words for us today and how to apply that in our daily lives. Hear our prayers when we pray for others, especially our leaders and government, our key workers and their families and all who help and serve us in our daily lives. Bless our brothers and sisters all over the world and keep them safe, as many face far times, face times that are far harder than we are. We know if you are for us, who can be against us? Help us to look up and see the beauty around us, not just the difficulties that are around us at the present times. To count our many blessings, as our sister Ida so often told us, even when we feel alone or afraid. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. So we've come to the end of the service again and we're going to close it with amazing hymn. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. And as we start another brand new week, let's take that with us in our hearts today. Yeah, and let the, and let the joy of the Lord be your strength. And uh, as always, if you don't know that joy of the Lord, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, he is a rock, he is an anchor, he is a certain thing uh, that you can have in your life. And he invites you to turn to him, to come in repentance, which is turning away from your sin and putting your faith and your trust in him. Believe that he died for you on the cross for your sins, taking the punishment for your sins, and believe that he rose again from the dead and gives you new life. So I just encourage you to do that. You just need to pray and, and uh, commit your life to him. But we're going to end, as Jane says, with that song. But for now, may God bless you. May he make his light to shine upon you. May he give you his peace. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm from the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comfort all. All in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. For Christ alone took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world in darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again.
again and as he stands in victory since curse has cost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns and calls me home here in the power of Christ I stand